We were at home with Nanny when she died. Nanny had been ill for a while. She had cancer. She had been told by the doctors earlier in the year that she couldn't have any more treatment. Even though I knew Nanny was ill, I never thought she would ever die. The doctor confirmed Nanny was dead and suggested that we call the funeral directors. These are the people who would help organize Nanny's funeral. They took some details and asked when we would like Nanny to be collected. The funeral directors came to the house. They waited for us to say our goodbyes. Nanny would stay at the funeral home until the day of the funeral. Nanny was gently lifted onto a stretcher. It was very sad knowing that Nanny wouldn't be coming back to the home that she had loved for so many years. Grandad made an appointment with the funeral director. Mum went with him to give some support. Grandad was given a book to help with ideas for the funeral. Nanny had told Grandad that she wanted a service to celebrate her life. They discussed the options of burial and cremation with the funeral director. Dad asked if I wanted to go with the rest of the family to see Nanny in the Chapel of Rest. I said yes, but I was a bit scared. I was glad we would all be there together. Mum picked out the clothes and perfume that Grandad wanted Nanny to wear. It was the outfit Nanny had worn at Christmas. We were all pleased that she would be able to wear her special dress for the funeral. When we went to see Nanny, she looked so peaceful. She wasn't in pain anymore. She was wearing her favourite dress and I could smell Nanny's special perfume. The funeral director gave me a memory there. It was very comforting when I held him close to me. Mum held Nanny's hand and she cried a lot. But Mum said it's okay to cry when you lose someone you love. We all had a chance to hold Nanny's hand and say our goodbyes. To celebrate Nanny's life, it is usual for someone to lead the service. Either a vicar from the church or a celebrant, who would take a non-religious service. Together they talked about Nanny and the special memories they had of her. They wrote a story about Nanny called a eulogy. Grandad chose Nanny's favourite hymns and Mum and Dad picked two poems to read from the book they'd been given. After that, Grandad spent a lot more time at our house. I went back to school and my teachers were very kind. They gave me a smiles and tears box, which helped me understand some of my emotions. I showed this to Grandad. We both loved the happy jar notes and the chocolate. On the day of the funeral, we all met at Nanny and Grandad's. Nanny's coffin was covered in all the flowers that we had chosen. They were beautiful, and I know she would have loved them. We were driven to the funeral in a limousine, following Nanny in the hearse. We had a little time together to reflect on Nanny's life. When we got to the church, the pallbearers, who are the people who carry the coffin, took Nanny out of the hearse and we followed them into the church. The church was so calm and peaceful. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Nanny's coffin was placed near the altar. We sat at the front of the church where we had seats reserved and the service began. We sang Nanny's favourite hymns, the ones I used to sing with her when we went to church together. When the service finished, Nanny was taken outside to the grave where she would be buried.
we walk to the grave behind Nanny's coffin. The grave had been dug big enough for Grandad to be buried there as well when he died, but I didn't want to think about that. All of the mourners came and gathered with the family. The pallbearers lowered Nanny's coffin into the grave. The funeral director sprinkled some soil over the top of the coffin while the vicar said a final prayer. Before we left the churchyard, we put some red roses into Nanny's grave. After the funeral, we went to Nanny and Grandad's house with the people who had come to the service. Some people call us awake. At first, it made me feel very sad. There were so many people I didn't know. They were chatting and laughing, and I didn't like that at first. Mum explained to me that Nanny had so many friends and that they all remembered her in different ways. And it was okay to laugh like Nanny always did. Mum's words made me feel better. I went and joined Nanny's friends and it was actually really nice to hear them talking about her and listening to some of their funny stories about Nanny. A few weeks after the funeral, I visited Nanny's grave, which has a plaque with her name on it. Dad told me that a stone will be placed on top of the grave in a few months, once Grandad decides what is going to be written on it. I felt quite peaceful. Even though the day of the funeral was sad, it hadn't been as bad as I thought, because I had my family by my side. I will always remember my loving, caring nanny. We were met at the crematorium by the celebrant and watched as Nanny's coffin was taken from the hearse. We followed Nanny's coffin as the pallbearers carried her into the chapel. She was placed on a platform called a catafalque. The celebrant spoke about Nanny's life and some of the funny things that she used to do. I read Nanny's favourite poem. At the end of the service, the curtains closed around Nanny's coffin. I felt very sad. We left the chapel and went outside to see the lovely flowers and messages that people had sent. The smell of roses reminded me so much of Nanny's garden. It's been six months since Nanny died, and on what would have been her 80th birthday, we scattered her ashes in the field that her house overlooks. Nanny always loved this place, so it felt right to do it here. I know that Mum had been really worried about whether the ashes really were Nanny's, but she asked the funeral director and he reassured her that everyone is cremated individually and the ashes are always kept separate. Life will never be the same without Nanny. I still get sad and sometimes I get angry, but I don't cry as much anymore, neither does Grandad. We talk about Nanny a lot and I know that we will never, ever forget her. <laughs>